Okay, so we've moved up to what we call the mid rail or the fly rail. Uh, all theaters have different parts and pieces and depending on where you're at, people might call them different things, especially depending on if you're in different countries or even part in the United States. We change terminology depending on what region we're in. Um, it's important to note though that the basics are almost always the same. First off, where we were just at when we were doing our genie lecture, the stage deck, okay? If you're standing on stage, you're standing on the deck, okay? We move up here to the mid rail in our space, this is where we operate the counterweight system. Uh, it's always called the mid rail or the fly rail, depending on where you're at and what you're doing. Above us is called the loading bridge. We call it the loading bridge because this is a counterweight system and that's where the weight goes, okay? Uh, and in the best and safest methodologies, we'll always be loading our weight up there. We'll be heading up there in a second. You also have the grid, which we're gonna go through in a little bit, a little bit later. Um, which is the area directly above stage that you can stand and walk and move around if necessary. But it gets a little interesting up there. So let's talk about a few of the other little parts and pieces that are involved in operating this system, okay? So if we're looking at just what we can see, we have our rope. Everybody knows what a rope is. So we have a rope, we have our rope lock, and our rope ring also called the locking ring right so when you come up here every single one of these locks rope locks should be in this position okay there are some other things that can tighten and loosen things you shouldn't really play with those if you think there's an issue come get Clark or myself and we will make sure it's correct but we do go through them pretty regularly so when operating this we always have to think about the four or five different steps, and we should leave them in the secure location until we are ready to use them. If the rope is not going to be used, I should never see this, right? Or worse, this, with no one around it. Those are horrible things. Um, and they're horrible things because we spend a lot of time making sure that everything's in weight. When we spoke earlier about pulleys, right? How a pulley works, if you're trying to lift something, is you pull on this rope to lift this weight. Ideally, in a counterweight system, whatever weight I load onto this system, which looks something like a lot of these, should equal whatever we hang on the bats, right? Whatever scenery needs to go up and down is what's going to be needed to be the same weight, okay? So we have to make sure we know how much each of these weigh. There's normally a sign on the wall. I think ours is actually all the way up top that gives us an actual weight indication on what each measurement weighs, okay? So this one weighs 22 and a half pounds, and I need to know that because I should have a rough idea what my scenery weighs. So, <clears throat> if we have both of these in weight or really close to it, we don't probably have to split hairs over a pound, right? I had a big lunch, it doesn't count. So. If you pull this up to operate it and you were to leave everything loose like we did a second ago, I'm gonna leave a hand on it for safety, but notice that this doesn't move, right? So right now there's nothing holding all of this weight and all of this weight, but they're close enough to where just the friction of the system is stopping them from moving. And that is always the goal, okay? Because if I had 300 pounds on one side, which sounds like a lot, but for a counterweight system, it's really not. 300 pounds on one side and nothing over here, all of a sudden, whatever's out there is going to come in, right? In meaning to the deck. Whenever we say the words in and out in a rigging system, in will always mean going down towards the deck and out will always mean going out towards the sky, away from the deck. Okay, so you'll hear pretty regularly, hey, bring in line set nine. And you have to know to bring in this line set, right? That means that they want this to go down to the deck. Okay, pretty simple call out. We'll go over a few more of those after we talk about a little bit how this works. Um, so if I was gonna operate this and we've already checked to make sure everything is in weight, the first step, other than getting a nice firm hand on the rope, and it depends kind of what you're doing. If I'm gonna test weight on it, I would grab both probably to start with, 
Because if you hold them together, they have less chance of moving on you, if they're slightly out of weight, right? These locks are being mean today. So I take the ring off first, hold it together. These locks are supposed to hold no more than 50 pounds out of weight. So we've talked about what in weight is. Out of weight is if I have 300 pounds on one side and none on the other, right? So if we were to pull this handle, great. We know that it's in weight. We know that it's safe to move now. So we would actually have, we have series of call outs that are meant to let people know in the stage space if it's safe to be here, okay? So in this case, it's always good to do it in a loud, clear voice, okay? No mumbling. We use certain words that can sometimes be heard wrong, like the word go, we don't use up here because it's too close to too many different words, right? So if we needed to move in line set eight, I would then loosen these up. And a good rule is if you need to pull it in, it's always gonna be the rope closest to you. In, pulling it in towards you. And out is the one further away from you, okay? I have seen people who've done this for 30 years get it wrong, so if it happens to you, don't worry about it. Just make sure it's not a big pull, right? So, the standardized call, if I was gonna bring in line set eight, if you see these, these are all numbered here, and this is how we can tell what they are. Normally for a show, they're also numbered what they are. Like if this is the kitchen, we know what it is, right? So you might hear, bring in the kitchen, whatever. So I would, in a very clear voice, trying to fill up the entire space, say, line set eight coming in. And then I would wait for a response, which if there's people in the space, you should hear them say, line set eight, thanks, or heard, or not heard, that's a bad one. A lot of people do do that, but yeah, there's some kind of thank you response. It's a peak and repeat. Because if no one says anything and there are 40 people down there, you're either not talking loud enough or they're not paying attention. And if I bring this in, Clark, go ahead and pan over to it. If I bring in line set eight, like this, and it goes over and hits somebody in the head because they weren't paying attention and they didn't respond, it's a lot of people's faults, right? So we're gonna stop that one right there. It's not gonna go all the way to the deck yet, but that's where it's at. Okay, so let's talk about a few of the parts and pieces. So we would say the same thing for line set eight going out. Thank you. You'd hear the call, boop, right? And the reason we do that is because people aren't always in the space, right? We have some of these all the way up against the upstage wall. And if I say line set 28 coming in and no one responds, that person who just finished lunch is going to walk in and bonk themselves in the head. I've done it. It's not fun. Didn't put me on the ground, but it wasn't fun. So that Pete repeat is good to know that they heard you and that if somebody yells thank you, everybody else on the deck is gonna look around and go, wait, what is this? So they're a little more aware of something is moving, right? You wouldn't do that during an actual show because if you have a castle wall flying in, this is where it's happening at, right? But at that point, everybody's rehearsed it and knows it's happening. So it's safer. But if we're just working in the shop, the more boisterous we can be in a clear voice, the better off we're gonna be. It's safer, it's nicer, and I don't like hitting Clark upside the head with pipes. He gets grumpy. Okay, so let's talk about a few more other parts and pieces. Um, we've talked about that this is the mid-rail where we're standing. Um, we have great names in theater again. This is the rope lock. This is the locking rail. So this large metal device that is welded into the system is what holds the extra weight from all the tension that could possibly pull up. It's not going anywhere, but it's there. These are all mounted. The locks are mounted to the locking rail, right? If we move into here, this wonderful device is called the arbor. The arbor holds the weight, right? We've talked about those 22 pound weights. The biggest thing about these is that they have to be balanced. We've already talked about that. I can loosen this pin just a little bit, if I was gonna change the weight on this, if this wasn't in weight, I can then lift this up and lock it down, okay? And then you end up in a spot where you can load weight. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get up there. But these are called, often they're just called weights. Uh, you hear them called pig irons, but they're counterweights, right? And they're different weights 
So that's like always the biggest thing to remember, which I know we already talked about. But we don't talk about the entire full parts and pieces of these because you don't really need to know the exact name of these rods. But things you should know, counterweights, this whole device is called the Arbor, right? And then you have these spreader plates right here. So if you'll notice, you can see there's two weights here and then there's a big piece of steel, okay? This is a little odd, but it's done for a reason. The spreader plate, in this case, is marking off how much pipe, because we use pipe to hold up all the weight, is actually going to, how much the pipe weight is. So we never go past this bar when we're changing weight, okay? But past that, a good rule of thumb is every two feet of weight, we need to put a spreader plate. And the reason we want to do that is because these massive steel plates actually stop these bars from bending, right? What do we think might cause bars to bend? That's steel. Well, in the most worst case scenario, right? We were talking about how the scenery piece was 300 pounds and this had nothing on it, that that would come into the ground real quick. That is called a crash, right? Um, or a running line set. It's also referred to. But what ends up happening here, if it happens the other way, say we were all the way up there, somebody took all the scenery off, but we did not balance the weight, okay? Um, now we have 300 pounds up there with nothing countering it. So it's not balanced anymore. This is only supposed to hold 50 pounds. Well, if this is tuned correctly, this rope is then gonna start slowly pulling through and it starts slow, it'll start moving a lot quicker. And eventually it'll hit almost free fall where you have 300 pounds falling, in our case, it's 50 some odd feet to the deck, okay? And that's called a crash. In that instance, with all that force, these metal pipes turn into spaghetti, right? They bend just like a car wreck or anything else. So these spreader plates, what they do is they keep those counterweights snug and secure between their edges, okay? If you look in here, you can see the little tuning fork looking things to make sure that they fit, okay? And with all that together, it then doesn't slide back and forth at all. And that makes for a very snug, secure fit, even in the worst case scenario, okay? So let's head up to the uh, locking, or to the loading bridge. We'll talk about a few more parts and pieces, and then we'll slide over to the grid.